Yer, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another Giants preview video. It is week three. It is the Giants at home against the Falcons. At Atlanta is traveling up to New York. Currently viewed as, you know, one of the worst teams in the league coming up to face the Giants. Also one of the worst teams in the league. Um, this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, can't believe I'm saying this, but I do think we have a little bit of a sliver of hope in terms of winning. And of course, for Giants and the Giants fans, this is a very important game for a multitude of reasons. Number one, Eli Manning. It is his retirement ceremony, his jersey retirement ceremony to be exact. It will take place at halftime, I believe. And that alone is reason enough for us not to lose against Atlanta. If we lose against Atlanta with Eli in the stands... As we're retiring his jersey, that is just the most utmost disrespect to, you know, your best franchise quarterback in your organization's history, a guy that helped you got two Super Bowls. That's just terrible. But reason number two, of course, is we can't drop to 0-3. We're already at 0-2, and, and um, a lot of Giants fans, including myself, are very skeptical about how we could dig ourselves out of this hole. But of course, we came into this, this season with hopes of being a good team, hopes of being a playoff team. Teams that start 0-2 are not playoff teams historically in the NFL. I think it's somewhere around 12% of teams that start 0-2 make the playoffs. And I mean, we could use the uh, the old excuse of it's the NFC East, anything can happen as much as we want. But the facts are the facts. Starting 0-2 is a very, very terrible start for a team that has playoff aspirations. And if you go 0-3, those aspirations are damn near snuffed out. So we cannot do that. The good news is, this is kind of a good game for every weakness on our team to bounce back. Like I said earlier, Atlanta is viewed as one of the worst, if not the worst teams in the NFL. And that's for a good reason. Our defense has been our weakness this year. And that's going to be first and foremost, the one thing that needs to show up no matter what happens. Um, it, it went from being the strength of our team. It went from being genuinely one of the best in the NFL, even if it was a little bit overrated, which I think it's clear now that our defense was probably a little overrated last year. It was still one of the best defenses in the NFL. What remained is that we still held teams to around 15 points. So far, when it comes to at least holding teams to points, I have it up right here. The Giants are 24th in the league. In terms of defense, Atlanta is 32nd. When you, when I now <laughs> go over to the points that we allowed, that that's exactly where we are. We let up 57 points and Atlanta let up 80. When it comes to yards allowed, the Giants are one of the worst in the NFL at 25th and Atlanta is actually at 20 with 827 yards allowed from the Giants and 775 allowed from Atlanta. What's even worse is if you go over to passing defense, because I think that is where we're terrible. We're absolutely terrible. We have to improve. We only have three sacks to Atlanta's fifth. I mean, four. Um, that's something we got to improve on. That's something the players and, and, and I'm not this is not a view where I'm going to start giving blame like I have in the past. No, 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 no. Players and coaches need to improve. Both of them. Y'all got to figure something out. Three sacks in two games is not a winning formula for a defense. Um, we're a little bit better when it comes to getting pressure with 17 pressures however we were a lot better last year we need to be a little bit more middle of the pack this is still like bottom 15 bottom 16 of the league type of stuff and like i said when you go over to passing defense the giants are 24th overall passing defense atlanta is 18th when it comes to completion percentage and i think this speaks volumes we are the 30th team in the league when it comes to passing defense and completion percentage we allow 75.6 percent of passes to be completed by opposing quarterbacks Atlanta allows 71.8 and I think this is something that needs to be said because Atlanta is viewed as having a bad defense and while I do wholeheartedly believe their defense is worse than ours not only on paper in terms of talent but also on the field in terms of um, performance these are numbers that don't lie you know what I'm saying and we allowed 575 passing yards to Atlanta's 520 that's 24 to 18 once again Pass deflections is something that we were strong at last year. We're kind of middle of the pack right now. With the Giants only have eight pass deflections, which ranks 17th in the league to Atlanta seven. So there's just one difference right there. And rushing defense as well, we got to improve. Another strength of the team last year, rushing defense. I think we were top 10 in the league. 
Not anymore. We are now 21st overall rushing defense to Atlanta's 23rd. Why did I say all of the all of these stats and everything? Oh, and I'm not even finished yet. Third down conversions and fourth down conversions. The Giants are middle of the pack when it comes to third down conversions. We allow 39.3% of, of um, attempts uh, that opposing teams try against us. Atlanta is 40% flat. Where we're terrible is fourth down conversions. Where we are the worst in the league because we allow 100% of attempted fourth downs to be converted. Atlanta has only allowed 25%. We need to improve in every aspect of this defense. Players need to show up. The guy I'm wearing, Blake Martinez, needs to show up. L Leonard Williams needs to show up. James Bradbury needs to show up. The entire defense needs to show up. Getting back to Leonard Williams, however, like I said, this is a game that's perfect for the Giants' weaknesses to bounce back. If we're going to get pressure and sacks on the quarterback, this game is going to be easiest to do so up the middle because of young guys, I think, in Caleb McGarry and Matt Hennessy that are on the inside of that Atlanta offensive line. Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence. Dexter, who, by the way, has one tackle through two games, which is terrible, absolutely cataclysmically bad. I don't know how that's possible. Both of them are going to need to have a game this Sunday. If they can get pressure up the middle and they can get to Matt Ryan and they could sack Matt Ryan because he's not a mobile quarterback, we have a great chance to win this game. I think that's the key to this game. Not only the defense improving, but us getting pressure up the middle. I think our edge guys still aren't ready yet. If they can get pressure from the edge that would be nice however the weakness of Atlanta's offensive line is in the middle they also these two big guys in Dexter and Leo need to show up in the rushing game I just showed y'all we know um week one it was one big run from Melvin Gordon that really kind of padded his stats but it remained that Broncos were still getting whatever they wanted with us whenever they wanted with us um we couldn't contain Antonio Gibson against Washington and then when they use their running backs out the backfield, our linebackers just, just could not cover to save their life. So we got to keep our eyes on running backs as well. Now, this is definitely the weakest running back core I think we've faced all year so far. And I think the weakest offensive line that we've faced all year so far. So once again, it's a perfect game for the defense to show up. When it comes to our offensive side and our weaknesses, I mean, last week our offense was the best performance out of them in the entire Joe Judge, Jason Garrett era. However... A guy like Kenny Gale, who I know was showed up on an injury report or something. This is another good game for him to just have that chemistry finally click with DJ and finally have a breakout game with the Giants. Finally have his first touchdown in the big blue uniform and just all, you know, all out dominate. Their best cornerback is AJ Terrell. He is a number two cornerback at best, in my opinion, in the NFL. While Atlanta has been getting pressures and sacks, they've been a pretty terrible secondary. This guy, Kenny Galladay, should feast. This guy, Daniel Jones, who showed out with his accuracy in passing last week, should feast. We'll see how they go. Um, but Kenny Galladay, this is your perfect chance to have a breakout game. Same for you, Saquon. I know they got one good defensive tackle over there. I think uh, I his name is slipping me, but you guys know who I'm talking about. I will recover when I do the, uh, the, the position comparison. But their D-line is not anything to necessarily be scared of. And they have, once again, you know, just like us, been pretty bad in rushing defense. So, Saquon, this is your perfect chance to really try and have that comeback game that we've all been waiting for you to have. All in all, Atlanta is the perfect team to face Week 3 for a team that wants to get back on track. For a Giants team that wants to get a win, wants to build off something positive from, from Washington, and wants to finally show some type of life. The players got to show up. And they did show up last week, but they were undisciplined and Wick made way too many mistakes. So the coaches got to show up with a little bit better game planning and a lot better discipline. We can't have another game where we have, I think it was 9, 10, or 11 penalties or something like that. Way too much. Especially for a team that prides itself on being disciplined. Can't be beating ourselves like that. But to close out the preview, let's do these uh, position comparisons. So you start off with quarterback. I think, I don't know. I'm going to still give it to Matt Ryan for now. I'm, I'm still going to give Matt Ryan the nod here at quarterback over Daniel Jones. I know a lot of people seem to think he's washed. Uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks we face that people thought were washed or not good, but our defense made them look amazing. That's not what I'm going to say is going to happen here, although I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. I'm just going to say that Matt Ryan for now is still better than Daniel Jones 
Although I could see that very much changing within the next couple of weeks if DJ continues on this path. Running back, they got Mike Davis. We got Saquon, of course. I'm going to give us that. Uh, Calvin Ridley at wide receiver. Russell Gage and Olamide Zachusis. I might be completely mispronouncing that. What I will say is we, we definitely got the better wide receiving core from top to bottom. Um, in addition to that tight end, they got Kyle Pitts and Hayden Hurst, which one thing I forgot to mention do not this defense do not forget to guard that second tight end we've been giving up a lot to the first tight end but the second tight end has been getting a lot of stuff in the red zone from us and they have two um hayden hurst and kyle pitts is that better than kyle rudolph and evan ingram i'm gonna say this is a wash to be honest with you because i'm not quite sure yet who has the better tight end core i'm just gonna say it's a wash are we really going to compare fullback keith smith versus eli penny I'm, I'm gonna give it to eli penny offensive line jake matthews Andrew Thomas is better. Jalen Mayfield to our left guard, who I'm assuming is going to be Ben Bredesen. I might just give it to Jalen Mayfield because we haven't seen enough from Bredesen yet, even though I am confident in him for me to put him over another guy. Um, Matt Hennessy over Billy Price. I'm going to give it to Billy Price uh, for now because once again, Hennessy. Uh, is one of the weaknesses on this line then we got chris lindstrom versus will i'm gonna give will the nod caleb mcgarry versus um nate solder i'm a can't believe i'm doing this i'm gonna give nate solder the nod like i mentioned earlier the two weaknesses on this line was hennessy and mcgarry so we'll see how that turns out then we go over to the base 3-4 d that atlanta runs they got jonathan bullard out there at one of the uh defensive end spots i'm gonna give it to leonard williams they got tyler davison and then i think we have um austin johnson that might be a wash i'm gonna be honest with you because austin johnson we might think he's really good but maybe this tyler davison guy is really good I, you know i'm gonna give it to austin johnson it's a giants channel anyway you let me be a little biased grady jarrett to dexter lawrence i'm gonna give it to grady jarrett um especially with, since dexter has disappointed thus far in the season now we got steven mins and uh dante fowler is their outside linebackers we have lorenzo carter and o'shane zimenez that's a wash because i think um carter is better than Min means but i think fowler is better than um Jimenez. or you could say the other way around cornerback they got aj terrell uh tj green and fabian moreau yeah i think we got the better cornerback group as well it's just a matter of these guys actually showing up you know what i'm saying it's a matter of james Bradbury getting back to form it's a matter of a Dory getting a little bit better, but he's been the most consistent guy thus far. And it's a matter of our slack guy and Darnay Holmes showing up and showing what he showed us last year. At safety, I'm gonna also give it to us. They got Deron Harmon, Eric Harris, Richie Grant. We got Logan Ryan, Jabril Peppers, Xavier McKinney, Julian Love. Yeah, I think we got the safety group as well. So once again, on paper, I'm very much convinced that we have the better team. It's a matter of these guys actually showing up and doing their job. That's it for now, you guys. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.